Hey, are you ready to grow your business? You have checked out the number one resource for business leaders, entrepreneurs, startup founders, and managers. And we're going to teach you how to grow and scale your business with real actionable steps. There's no fluff in this podcast. It's just good advice. Check out this episode. If you're a first-time listener, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. And if you enjoy this episode, leave us a five-star review. Today's episode is with Killian Markert, who joins the show to talk about how do you show up day after day after day. If you're like me, you know that some days you wake up, you're ready to go, you're excited, you're energized, you're ready to give your best energy and make things happen. And then there's other days, you know, those days you wake up and you're like, man, how am I ever going to do what needs to be done, get done what needs to happen today, or maybe just emotionally, physically, all these things that can happen that make you just feel like you don't have your best self to give. Killian's going to be sharing what he does and some of his insights that he gives some of his coaches on how they can show up every day and how you can be consistently performing day in and day out. Hey, enjoy this episode. Here comes your good advice. Hey, thanks for checking out another episode of the Good Advice Podcast. Sitting down with my friend Killian Marker today. We're talking about, hey, how do you stay consistent in business? You as, you as well as I know that day after day, it's hard to get up and have the same drive, the same energy, the same focus. You know, you have Monday, you're feeling hot, you're coming out of the gate, you're ready to rock, but then by Thursday or Friday, you're just burning out. It's like these weird, random up and downs in your business. Killian's joining us today from Killian Market Cons Consulting. He's going to be talking about how you can stay consistent in business, how you can keep getting the results you need in business, and most importantly, how you can actually scale your business and not kill yourself doing it. Killian, great to have you here today. How's it going? What is going on, Blake? I'm super pumped to be here. And uh, that was an awesome introduction, man. And yeah, I'm super excited to drop some good value for your audience. Today. Well, I, I, had, I felt like out of respect, I had to give you a really strong intro because something I really like about you, Killian, is, uh, and this is just a, just a great insight right off the bat for all the listeners, is Killian, you reached out. You said, hey, I think I might have something of value for your audience. It wasn't a spam message. It wasn't a um, copy paste, you know, just kind of the random thing that gets sent out to people. You sent me a personal invite. You sent me a video, a personal video as well, which people rarely do today. You obviously understand what it means to set yourself apart in every, you know, amongst all the other messages in the inbox. Talk to me a little bit about your philosophy of business, of, of networking, of reaching out to people, because obviously you get it. Talk to me more about what you think. I think that's, that's first of all, thank you very much for highlighting that. And I feel uh, appreciated by you saying that. And that uh, feel, makes me feel good because I put also effort into that, right? I mean, that's a philosophy of business, just as you say. And um, in general, it's something which comes back down, in my opinion, to knowing exactly who you can serve most, knowing exactly what value you bring to the table, and then really pinpointing that into the world. What do I mean by that? If you really spam people really hard and just shoot out millions of messages, chances are you're not really focusing on a specific niche. You don't really have a specific niche that you're serving because if you did, you could just go to these people talk to a number of those people and really make sure that you're giving genuine value. You don't have to play the numbers game so much, right? You just talk to the right people, know exactly what value you can bring to the table. And then of course, it's all about serving, man. It's all what you give that comes back to you again, right? That's my philosophy in business. And for lots of you guys out there, um, for some re reading material is also just simply uh, Russell Brunson's uh, traffic secrets. If you, if you read his idea on the Dream 100, basically giving value first to people in your industry, making sure you're serving them, and then in, things will come back to you later on as well. Yeah, and it feels like we've kind of, so first of all, yes, great concept. Love it. I think people listening, especially if someone's maybe a new business owner, they're getting really energized around this idea of, okay, how do I give? How do I give value? 
my question to you is, it feels like we, we aren't always clear on what that looks like to the perspective, perspective buyer, excuse me. And so great example of this, uh, I had someone who DM'd me, it was a cold sale. It was someone who was trying to get me to buy from them, never met the person. And the person started the message with, hey, Blake, I want to give you value today. So mm. this person understands the concept. They understand they need to give value in order to get me to respond or reciprocate in some way. But, but where he missed it then was the execution. He said, hey, I want to give you value today. Would you book a call with me and we can spend about an hour talking about your business and how I might help? So mm. really taking away the jargon there, he's trying to get me on a sales call to pitch me his services. But the disconnect is in his mind, what's giving value is getting on the sales call. For me, it's you're trying to take my time. You aren't giving me anything. You're trying to take from me. You're trying to move towards that sale. Why does it, why does it feel like people are so confused on what it really means to give value? That, that's a good question. I don't know. It's, it's probably because there's tons of different uh, techniques and courses out there of people telling you different things and r really different philosophies where people just say, oh, it's a numbers game and people totally neglect the human element. That's something I've found a lot, especially with uh, social media, which should bring you together, but it doesn't really. It removes the human element more and more. It's so many more tools on automating outreach on automating uh, messaging requests and all these kind of things. And yeah, people understand or don't understand rather that it's still human to human. Mm. Business is still, there's a human per, a human element here and the human element there. And it's, it's still, people make uh, transactions between humans. And that's the most important point. And that's what you have to dial in. And it's, it, there's an, that's what get lost with social media, man, that there's another person at the end of that. And you think it's just some texts what I'm looking at, right? And oh, the next one, the next one. And that's also the, each single person becomes less important, becomes mm. kind of uh, replaceable because there's millions out there that you could just go on on the next one uh, on social media, right? So knowing that, yes, there is always a, a human and you don't even need so many new people uh, like there's this concept of the the, the 1,000 true fans, right? If right. you have that, like you have 1,000 true fans who buy your stuff, man, you're going to be really rich, right? <laughs> and that, that's the same idea. Just build it from scratch. Um, be genuine. I think that's super important. And, uh, and focus on actual value. I'm not saying you're going to deliver value, but actually do it. <laughs> and you don't need to say it then, right? Yeah, if yeah. you send someone something cool that you feel like could be helpful, that's value if it doesn't take something of his time. I love that. Yeah. And I love it. It's, it's like stripping away the, um, man, I, I can't think of the right word. It's not propaganda. That's like too harsh a word, but it's, but it's almost like we're so into the phrasing, the terminology. I want to give value. Um, even like building, I love the 1000 true fans call concept. Um, you know, I want to build my 1000 true fans, but then you don't know, like you don't actually create, I love what you said, the human element that gets people to feel engaged with you. Um, let's talk about your business a little bit. Obviously, you know, you get some things that you've already mentioned here today. Uh, you, you work with business owners on a day-to-day -day basis. Share a little bit with me and the audience a little bit more about um, your business, Killian Market Consulting. 100%. So I partner up with lots of busy business owners. Usually these are founders, these are business owners of, of agencies, of, of brands or other people in high positions where they have a team, right? And what I help them is to really um, dial in their days. That means making sure they have consistent energy each day. They're having really good performance on a day-to-day -day basis where they're not neglecting themselves while they're actually working and growing their business. So a lot of people have big goals with their agencies or their business. They want to grow that more and more. But then something is neglected along the way. And it's usually things like exercise, like good food, sleep sacrificed a lot, 
time outside of business for some hobbies, some reading, you know, like business consumes the day kind of. And this is a, is a shame because very often that ends in burnout, that ends in also losing excitement, losing sight of the vision why you got into this in the first place, which also usually comes from first some, some passion or something that you were excited about and you lost it and you felt burnout. That's also not the goal. So I really help them to dial these things in so they can grow their business uh, without sacrificing themselves others or burning themselves out well it's an interesting thought because you know if you talk to i mean really any new business owner anywhere i mean it, what's really funny about entrepreneurship for example is as an entrepreneur gets into a new business uh that passion you're talking about they're passionate they're excited you know they're thinking you know and it's it's funny and i don't mean to knock you know uh new business owners but Sometimes the passion's a little over the top where someone says like, yeah, I'm creating the next Amazon. I'm creating the next Facebook. And you're like, wow, you go, you know, <laughs> I hope you do, but you probably won't. Um, but people get so excited. But the, the story that's so common is you've been in business for three months, six months, 12 months, and you're doing 80 hour weeks and mm -hmm. you're burning out. And sort of those hobbies that you mentioned are, um, have disappeared. In fact, I just talked to a guy who's selling his business and he just said, Blake, I'm just tired. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm so like the rat race. I'm just so worn out, so tired. I don't have it in me anymore. Um, how does that happen? I mean, is, is it the old like cliche of work-life balance? I mean, what, how do people consistently get trapped into these cycles of burning so much energy and burning out? That, that's a good question. And I would start out by saying it depends also a little bit on what stage you're in in the business, right? For someone who is uh, this solo warrior who just started out is maybe like still one man show has like a, an agency or has something where they still largely, you know, themselves or maybe just a co-founder or another person or a small team where a lot of work is depending on them. Then it's simply also a lack of proper delegation, a lot, lack of proper delegation of management, micromanaging, thinking they need to do everything themselves. Like that, that's a really big one, right? And they, they could work less if they manage properly. So that's for sure. Then for the stage where people are already having a bigger team, they're growing the business and so on. So they understand the importance of outsourcing and so on, but still work a lot. Then it's usually due to, to their own um, lack of efficiency. They're still working on the fire tasks, putting out fires here and there and setting, instead of working on the business, on the truly impactful things, right? Mixing up priorities. And then the other thing is also deeper mindset problems of thinking, oh, I always need to work more, otherwise I feel guilty. These are very deep things also related to, to uh, deeper issues about uh, associating your own self of uh, own sense of self worth with basically how much you work each day, right? This mm -hmm. is a very very deep deep problem, okay. and you need to detach that. And otherwise, you will not be able to consistently keep your energy high and your excitement level, mm -hmm. right? So understanding that first, what drives you, and then making sure you have these safety mechanisms like making sure you do still two hobbies, your energy management is on track, you're still doing exciting things and recharge properly, and then um, you can make sure that you don't burn yourself out. So let me ask you something. You, you've laid out really three different possibilities and, and these things are, these three, um, I'd call them trends, are so prolific in so many different business owners. And, and just to recap them for the listeners, you talked about the owner who um, it's about control and you know is unable to delegate, which I think is such an accurate call out. You know, it, it has to be me because I'm going to do it the right way or I understand the business or what have you. So it's about control or maybe it's about ego. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, number two, the person who you called them inefficient, uh, and I would totally agree. It's the business owner who's simply focusing on things that, that aren't moving the needle for the business, right? It's like the person who, um, you know, I mean, I'll never forget the business owner who spent a month trying to build their website and the website wasn't any good cause they're not a, they're not a web designer. Yeah. And I thought, man, why wouldn't you have just paid someone to do that? Like in a week for the version that you have. Uh, and then you could have spent the other three weeks actually focusing on what actually drives revenue for your business. So people being inefficient. And then the third one that you mentioned is these people who are um, woefully blind to the 
it's unfair to say like, I don't want to make anyone panic here, but it's, it's, it's mental unhealth. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's things that are part of my identity that I don't realize such as if I, you know, exactly what you pointed out, if I'm not accomplishing, I must be valueless. So therefore I have to be driving, et cetera, et cetera. Question I want to ask you is regardless of whatever bucket someone falls into, how does someone build like a listener, for example, someone who's listening right now, how does someone build the self-awareness to be listening to this podcast listening to the three examples you just gave, how does someone build the self-awareness to hear what you just said and realize, crap, I'm in that bucket. That's me. Like how does, because you know, when you're in it, it's so hard to realize you're in it. And then so you get out of it and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's me. How does a business owner become self-aware enough to realize I have a problem and I'm in one of those buckets? Mm. So if that business owner already has the self-awareness, it should have made like a, a ring right now, right? The bell should have rung already, right? <laughs> that, that, that's for sure. But if you don't have that self-awareness yet and it didn't ring a bell for you when we just talked about this, then I think probably there's a few options. You, didn't, you haven't seen um, the, the pain it caused you yet. It's, it wasn't painful enough yet. You haven't seen yet how you were burning out. You haven't seen the effects yet. You might have ignored them while, you know, hustling even more. That is, a, is another issue, right? And the, the, the thing I would say is you got to zoom out out of your day-to-day activities. That's probably my call for you to build more self-awareness is when you just are stuck in the day-to-day Ask yourself, when was the last time I actually reviewed and planned my weeks? Second, when was the last time I actually reviewed and planned my months? And when did I take like a full day or a weekend off where I just did high level thinking Mm. about, okay, where is my business going? How did I develop in the last few months? Did I make progress compared to last year? Right. And the biggest reason why people are stuck in that and they don't make progress is, well, they're caught in their own blind spots. They have the ego barrier. That's what Ray Dalio talks about a lot. Highly recommended book, Principles, Ray Dalio. He says, we all have our blind spots and we don't see it. We don't have the self-awareness because we always look from our perspective. So what I would say in business, if you don't have anybody who helps you out with different perspectives in business, well, minimum, you want to have a, a kind of a friend as a business owner who can give you a different perspective and view it more objectively. But even better, if you had like a, a mentor or a business coach, right, who helps you with actual business strategy and says, man, what you're doing here is, is BS. Get Hire someone. Uh, you're burning yourself out. Like, what are you doing, man? Why do you design a website? What's that, right? But these things, like you want to have someone who tells you these things. And personally, also a few years ago, when I had no clue, I was also trying to design my own website. (laughs) And and it was was because I didn't have anybody. I didn't have a mentor um, who who helped me out with that, right? And I think that's super important. And people, that's that's the thing. When you're in entrepreneurship, you got to understand that it is taking risks. And you can try to play it safe. You can try to make everything on your own and try to do everything on your own. But know that there's people out there who take the risks and invest into specialists like business mentors, like graphic designers and so on, which causes costs money. So it's an investment, it's a risk, but it brings them further and it gives them awareness. It cuts the learning curve. And if you're afraid of investing then it's a problem because then you try to do everything by yourself. You're stuck with your own um, own blind spots. And that's the problem why you don't develop that self-awareness apart from the other things I, I told about that you should zoom out and get out of the day-to-day. You know, it's this, it's this, it's interesting, like the person who, like I think of two business owners, one who is, <clears throat> one who is like the progressive, proactive you know, it's the person who not only will seek out counsel from friends who are in business and who will even like pay for help for their business, but also like it's the person who is eagerly talking to customers on what do you think about my product? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? 
And then you have the other person who it's almost like this sense of, I have to do it by myself. I have to do it my own way. Uh, if I ask for help, I'm weak. Uh, I'm not willing to pay for anything. I'm not willing to pay for any help. Uh, I'm not willing to ask customers what they really think because it might, it might um, rain on my parade, so to speak. You know, it's interesting, these two different kinds of entrepreneurs today. Um, obviously, I would guess that you really surround yourself with that first person who's excited, eager, ready to go. Talk to me a little bit about what some of the work that you're doing with your clients, with your customers, you know, with that, that entrepreneur who's hungry and is willing to move forward. What does that relationship look like? Well, first of all, it, we do something which would actually also benefit the second type. And it's something which I think is super important. It goes back to the self-awareness point of view. So every kind of client I work with, we start out with some deeper mindset work. I have like a very extensive survey where we really dial in several areas of their lives. Also limiting beliefs they might have about themselves. Things like, you know, this deriving of self-worth that we talked about earlier. And then we look, okay, what's your self-image? What kind of belief do you have about yourself? How do you see yourself? What are your predominant traits? What are your values? All these kind of things. Why is that so important for both for both of them, because this self-awareness is the key foundation to understanding your tendencies. If people are hungry and they want to go forward and optimize their performance in their days, awesome. They also need to be careful because what makes the what drives them is also something which can be a disadvantage. It's a two-edged sword, right? Because they're super hungry. Because very very often these people are also too hungry sometimes, and they they start they have problems, you know, uh, recharging and taking a step back. So driving that, gaining the understanding of okay, I might be so over eager for things because I still want to prove maybe someone wrong. Maybe, you know, I want to prove to someone that I'm, that, I, that I'm not a failure, that I'm good enough, right? Mm -hmm. I want to prove someone through business success, all of these things. And getting a bit more awareness about these things initially is super important. And of course, that's refined along the way. And then once we have that awareness, what I really do with my clients is I help them establish solid habits that allow them to be consistent with the things they know they should be doing consistently to A, have a lot of energy each day and B, grow, them, grow their business in such a way that it's not burning themselves out. So they're operating efficiently and so on. And on a pro more practical note, I help them optimize their sleep. I help them optimize their nutrition. I help them optimize their, their, their exercise and movement and literally how they spend their day. So their daily schedule, morning routines, evening routines, how they focus and how they schedule their time and so on. And also making sure they're having time outside of work, right? That's basically how I work with my clients. And that's something um, which then helps them to not burn out. All right. Well, let's let's settle um, let's settle something that I've I've heard people talk about. I've seen people talk about, and this is a little bit on, I guess, what gets people excited about entrepreneurship. But I want you to think about your clients and and what their habits are like, or rather, what their habits are like after they work with you. So I talked to a guy who he said, "Man, I really want to be an entrepreneur." And I said, "Well, why do you want to be an entrepreneur?" And he said, I love the idea of being able to sleep in as late as I want. And so I was kind of laughing as we were talking, but then I saw on in an entrepreneurship group that I'm part of, someone asked, does it matter what time you wake up if you want to be a successful business owner? And a lot of the comments were actually saying, no, if you want to sleep in till one or two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, that's the joy of being an entrepreneur. That's what you get to do, right? Some of this seems a bit... Uh, it seems like there's a little bit of a disconnect here. What's your take on it? It, it depends on what kind of life you want to live. Um, let, me, let me put it that way. Because when you are at a stage where you have a business and you have automated it to a certain degree and you just want to sleep in all day and might give you some monthly recurring revenue and you're happy with that, it might be possible, right? That you could do that. You could pull that off. But you're missing a deeper component there. You're missing actually the fact, and I like to call it that discipline equals freedom. And it's something which Jocko Willink and, and a lot of other guys talk about as well. And it's the idea that if you're able to structure your day 
And if you're really having good habits, it actually gives you the energy that you need to be actually able to say, I do whatever I want. Because if you are distracted all day and if you're eating unhealthy food and if you're um, not taking time for yourself and you're not energetic, well, you might be able to sleep in, but do you enjoy your day? Do you enjoy it when you wake up with brain fog? Do you enjoy it when you like getting out of shape? When you in the afternoon, you're crashing again? Like, is that what you want, right? And chances are for my clients, for example, they don't want that. What they want is, most of my clients, they say they want this. They want to wake up quite early. doesn't have to be brutally early, but, but early. And they get solid amounts of work done early in the day. And then they finish most of the work in the early afternoon, which then allows them to do some more creative kind of things, jump on a podcast in the afternoon if they want to, but they don't have to because they got solid work hours already done from early morning until after early, early lunch, basically time. And, and then they can decide what they want to do. They can do like some more work, creative style, or they go out and they, they travel a bit, they do some hobbies, they, they go on some conference, whatever, they go to the gym, they do salsa classes, like whatever it is that, that lights up your heart. And that's super important. Um, and waking up early definitely helps with that. It's not a prerequisite that you have to join the 5 a.m. club or something like that, right? But waking up earlier is just one facet, one sign of you having some structure in your day which then enables you to get stuff done, have your business on a higher level, and then still outside of that, have time for your personal life, right? Mm -hmm. You need to have that dialed in. Otherwise, you're all over the place. And if you don't protect your agenda, someone else will. You will become part of someone else's agenda. And that's why it's so important. I love it. It's great advice, Killian. Uh, and today's been an awesome episode. Tell me and my listeners, what's the next thing people can do to engage with you, to follow you? Uh, what, what does that look like for the audience to really follow up if they want to learn more about you? 100%. You can just check me out on my Facebook profile. I have a free Facebook group for high-performing business owners. Check that out. You can join. And apart from that, I also have a free resource for you guys. It's my master checklist. It's basically all the important habits that I feel like you should have in your day to be a high-performing business owner and not burn yourself out. And you can just check out my website, killianmarket.com slash checklist. And there you can just download that. But I think maybe that's also in the, in the show notes or something. Yeah, yeah, I will put it down in the episode description below. And the, again, that's at KillianMarkert.com, K-I-L-I-A-N, and then Markert, M-A-R-K-E-R-T.com slash checklist. That'll be down in the show notes below. Killian, it's been awesome having you on the podcast today. I appreciate you joining in. Thank you very much, Blake. It's been an absolute pleasure. For the listeners, definitely check out his website. Also, I'll put a link to his Facebook group down in the episode description below. And hey, if you're a first-time listener to the podcast, what the heck are you waiting on? Click that subscribe button so you can keep getting good advice to you wherever you are. And if you listen to this episode and you love this episode, definitely leave us a five-star re review. Check us out on Patreon. Definitely become part of our crew. Hey, I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you following. Tell a friend. We appreciate you. We love you. Check you later. See ya.